right, and last but not least, I would like to introduce our last speaker for this morning, this afternoon. He is a colorectal cancer patient here at Perlmutter Cancer Center, and he is kind enough to be with us today to share his story and his experiences with cancer. So I would like to welcome Joseph Saravo. Come on up. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for responding. Um, I am not a scientist, uh, nor am I a physician. Sure, thank you very much. Just a little housekeeping here, sorry. Uh, I'm, uh, <clears throat> as I said, I'm not a scientist, and I am not a physician. Uh, so any of my remarks uh, today, please take uh, in that context. Um, I am a cancer patient here at NYU. Um, I'm a double cancer patient here at NYU in, that, in, in this sense. Uh, I'm coming up on my two-year anniversary of my initial diagnosis. Um, I was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer on the 13th of April in 2017. Um, I won't uh, go through the litany of uh, all of my troubles, but simply to give you a context from which I am sharing these experiences with you, um, I would quickly tell you that uh, I was diagnosed, as I said, with prostate cancer. Um, I went through... Uh, I went through a lot. Um, Eventually, I, uh, I was found to also have uh, colon cancer. Um, I went through 10 uh, treatments of radiation for my prostate cancer uh, initially. Um, I've been through uh, surgery. I had part of my sigmoid colon uh, removed. I had 10 inches of my colon removed. Um, I had a bag for three months. And then the reversal, they rehooked up my tubes, thank God. Um, I've been through 10 for the colon cancer. I've been through 10 uh, full fox treatments, if, for those of you who are familiar with that, what that is. Um, and I, in the last six months, have been on a, what they call a reduced dosage. I just do uh, 5-FU, which has a very... Uh, um, a very funny uh, name for it. Uh, you can probably imagine what 5-FU uh, is often referred to. Um, it's a miracle that I'm standing here talking to you. Uh, again, I cannot speak to you uh, about the science of it, but I can share with you those things that uh, I have done um, that I feel have helped, and uh, some of them have or have not um, been scientific. Um, the only other thing that I would say uh, is that I've had some great doctors here at NYU uh, for whom I'm uh, very grateful. Um, just in addition to the prostate and the colon cancer, at one point I was septic. Uh, I had something called PCP, which is a, a form of pneumonia that typically afflicts uh, HIV and, uh, and some cancer patients. Um, I had shingles. I mean, it was just uh, a nonstop uh, S show, as they say. Um, and in the middle of all of that, when I was first uh, diagnosed two weeks later, my mother died. Uh, so it was quite a, an avalanche of experiences. Um, in terms of attitude, I would say that my uh, daily mantra is, if RBG can do it, well, then so can I. Uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with the notorious RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, from my understanding, she has survived colon cancer and pancreatic cancer, and she's back on the bench. So I consider her to be an inspiration to me. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm bringing uh, that up because I think that attitude is essential uh, in surviving this disease. Um, I would uh, first start by saying that 
For those of you who are cancer patients, and I don't know who you are, um, or for those of you who are loved ones of cancer patients, you are now a member of a very special club. And it has been my personal experience that uh, over the last two years, people have come out of the woodwork who have also been cancer survivors to help me, to advise me, uh, to be with me. Uh, um, and uh, it has been essential in uh, my particular journey. Uh, so uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, battling against this disease, just know that uh, you are not alone and that those people who are around you are absolutely essential for your uh, continued survival. Um, there is a, a dear, dear friend of mine whose husband uh, had colon cancer and she uh, one day came to the hospital to visit me and she told me, she said, Joey, you will find that there will be people who are not capable of dealing with your situation, who are not capable of knowing how to talk to you, um, who are frightened by it, or perhaps your situation reminds them of someone in their family. Um, and she said, you have to understand that you have in your heart uh, enough love and forgiveness to embrace them and to forgive them for their, their inability to help you. Um, and that was a big, big help to me. I know this is a little bit touchy-feely, so forgive me, but uh, these are aspects of confronting your situation that are not scientific, but in my personal experience, they are very effective. Um, I would say that I have found it very helpful to talk about it. Uh, I have found that even though my experiences have uh, sometimes made me want to hide in shame uh, or discomfort, uh, that, that that was not helpful to me. Uh, so I have personally found that talking with my friends who have also survived cancer, uh, or who I should put it in the present tense, are surviving cancer, uh, that I found that extremely helpful. And that the impulse to, to hide and to feel ashamed of myself uh, was not helpful. Um, I know it sounds silly, but uh, a positive thinking is absolutely essential, absolutely essential. Um, and banishing negativity is also essential. So uh, especially when I was in, in uh, the NYU, in this hospital, I should say, not the NYU hospital, here, um, when someone would come into my room and they would look at me with that look like, oh boy, you know, you're a goner. Um, I found whatever way possible to get rid of them, <laughs> to get them out of my face, uh, because they were not helping me. They may not have even known that they were not helping me, but I did everything I could to remove them from the room, because negativity was not helping me. That's all I knew. And believe me, and I'm sure some of you will know this, you recognize the physical behavior, you recognize the look on someone's face, that they walk in the room and they have, you know, you're a dead man walking to them. You gotta get rid of those people. Forgive them and then let them go. That's my, my personal feeling. Um, I also have found it very important to laugh. I, uh, I tend to be a night owl, uh, so I, um, I watch Colbert, I watch Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, I make sure that I laugh every night before I go to sleep. Um, I think that laughter is a huge, huge medicine, uh, a very important medicine in, in confronting this, this disease. Um, again, I'm not espousing these things. I'm not trying to convince you that you should meditate or that you should pray. But if you do pray, or if you're inclined to prayer, 
uh, I found it very helpful. Um, I found meditation very helpful. Uh, I don't meditate every day, but I do, whenever possible, uh, find time to do that. And, um, and I do pray every morning, and I do pray every evening. Um, and I, I personally find that very helpful. Um, on the subject of, you know, uh, Josephine, was that her name? The, the nutritionist? Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the information that she was uh, uh, sharing with us, I found uh, uh, very um, informative and very helpful. I take a lot of supplements. Um, I take a lot of probiotics. Um, Thorn, if you're familiar with um, that company, uh, has a very good product. Um, and that helps me. I also go to acupuncture. Um, probably uh, twice a month I go. I just went yeah, last night, as a matter of fact. Um, uh, the Chinese are very smart people. And they've been practicing ch uh, acupuncture for 5,000 years. So any moron who does something for 5,000 years is bound to figure it out and get it right. So, uh, uh, and I've been going to acupuncture for about 25 years, so I, I find it extremely helpful. Um, I exercise. I, I walk a lot. Um, I go to PT. Um, it's a long story, but I have frozen shoulder because when I uh, initially was hospitalized that morning, I, I fell uh, and collapsed in ferocious pain and uh, fractured my shoulder, the humerus of my shoulder bone. Uh, so as a result, I go to PT. I'm going to PT this afternoon after this uh, conference is over. Um, I generally go to PT twice a week. Uh, the weeks that I'm doing the chemo, um, I back off a little bit because for those of you who are familiar with uh, the side effects of chemotherapy, sometimes I literally cannot leave the house. Uh, but I would say I average uh, uh, going to PT about six times a month. Um, I also uh, practice yoga. Um, I have a yoga instructor who comes to my apartment about twice a month. And I also find that extremely helpful um, for physical reasons and for uh, internal, let's just call them internal reasons. I find it extremely helpful. Uh, work. I think uh, returning to work as soon as possible is also really helpful. It gives me focus um, and it gives me, a, 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 it renews my purpose in life. Um, as far as resources are concerned, the internet can be a double-edged sword, as I'm sure everybody knows. Uh, and knowledge, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing for someone who's not a doctor. Uh, I'm a, a fan of research, uh, but I do know my limits. And so when, uh, I, when I get to a point where I feel like, oh my God, I, I'm driving myself crazy, uh, then I, I insist that I get the hell off the computer uh, because it can also <laughs> send you down a rabbit hole, as I'm sure you all know. Um, the main, uh, my final, well, there are a few more points, but um, I would say have courage for those of you who are cancer patients to advocate for yourself. Uh, doctors, God bless you, are, uh, are not perfect. They're human beings. They make mistakes. Uh, and they work their fannies off. And, uh, and for that, we're all grateful. Uh, but they do make mistakes, or they do oversee, uh, you know, miss things. And so um, I never, ever go to a doctor's appointment by myself, ever. I always bring my posse with me. Uh, and those people can be um, my daughter, uh, a dear, dear friend of mine who is a cancer survivor, comes to probably 90% of my appointments, God bless her. Um, and we record those appointments. Obviously, we ask the doctor's permission, but um, we take out our iPhones and we record those because, you know, the doctor can say something to you that 
can send your mind off on a tangent and it can take you 10 or 15 minutes to reel that sucker back in and, and focus in the present moment. You know, I, 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 can, I, can, be, I can go off if, uh, if Dr. Oberstein for, should say something to me um, or Dr. Ballar, you know, that, that upsets me. Uh, so the recordings are, are very helpful uh, to go back and, and listen to afterwards. Um, I ask a lot of questions. I would say, um, I just quote a, an old t mentor of mine, there is no such thing as a stupid question, only stupid answers. So the worst thing that you can do is not ask that question that is nagging at you. So uh, again, God bless these doctors, but they are human, and so you have to ask those questions because you can't go home afterwards and then say, oh gosh, I, I should have said or I should have asked, do it. Your life depends on it. Um, as far as chemotherapy is concerned, look, uh, anyone who's gone through chemotherapy knows it is not fun. Uh, and it often uh, results in um, changes in your uh, bowel movements. I, I personally get a lot of constipation, a lot of terrible pain, and then uh, a lot of going to the bathroom. Uh, so, you know, um, I'm not embarrassed to say I buy Depends by the box and, uh, and I carry them with me. You know, I have them in my bag. I never know if, while I'm going through chemo what's going to happen. So you have to be prepared. Um, I would say uh, in closing, um, just to remind everyone whether you are a cancer patient or whether you're a loved one, who is standing by a cancer patient, the most important thing is not to be alone in your journey. Um, it, it, I just, if there were words uh, that were sufficient to tell you how deeply I feel about that, uh, I, I'd, I'd look for them, I'd find them, but I, I really can't other than just to say that if you know someone or love someone who is uh, dealing with this disease, be by them. Uh, stand by them, um, maybe just be with them and not even talk to them. But it's very important that, uh, that a cancer patient know that he or she is not alone. Um, I'm a big fan of Shakespeare's and uh, I'm particularly fond of King Lear. And in King Lear, uh, there's a scene uh, in, on the heath and then in the hovel. And afterwards, a character named Edgar says these following four lines when he uh, observes uh, Lear's troubles. Who alone suffers, suffers most in the mind, leaving free things and happy shows behind. But then the mind much sufferance doth overskip when grief hath mates and bearing fellowship so with that, I would just say, um, once again, you are not alone. And if you find yourself alone, find someone to be with you. Uh, may God bless you all. Thank you.